Notice that even though that Niccolo's up in terms of material, um, his pieces aren't as good. And this is the interesting point, is that if you, um, if you have a position where you're up a material, but your pieces don't actually do anything, whereas when you look at whites, they're doing all kinds of stuff, then in a way, that's a good way to understand chess, is because then you, know, you really don't have as much control as your opponent, even though you have more stuff. Okay, now I think um, maybe Van made a small inaccuracy here. Probably the easiest thing to do, I think, would be just to play rook e1 here. And notice he, he we're threatening pawn takes pawn check. And if you take, and we'll just take back with the pawn, and really we've opened up even more windows now on the Niccolo's house because we're going to play the rook here now and we're going to advance the pawn. And it's really a big, big mess. But the main point to see is that by keeping our pawn on e5, at least for the moment, we're preventing this knight from coming to f6. And I think that's a, a key, deeper strategy that white needs to have in mind to try to keep black's pieces from coming out. Nevertheless, Van just played to his style, and I think this was good. He played pawn takes pawn, pawn takes, and now check. He just wants to get all of his pieces in the game, which is a very good thing to do. And now Niccolo played a good move. I think his only move here, see, if he brings his knight here, then queen takes pawn, and that's a mess. And if he goes king f8, then bishop takes pawn is a huge mess too, see, because you can't take the bishop because of mate. And um, you can't put the knight here because of mate. And you can't even give up your queen because of mate. So, king f8 wasn't possible. And Niccolo played a very good move. He played king d8. And here it begins to look like maybe black might survive. Now, because, see, his knight's going to come here, and his king's going to come here, maybe. And it's not entirely clear how the attack should proceed. And one of the reasons I thought this game was so nice was from this position, particularly this next move, um, Van and his, and his cohorts, the positions, they played um, a move that at first I didn't like that much, but then I realized it's just kind of a principled good move. And that move was rook b1. See, at first I didn't like it because it was like, well, He's about to bring out his knight, and, and we're not doing anything here, because the rooks, yeah, it's nice on b1, but it doesn't actually attack anything. But in a way, the positions had seen deeper than I had, because it turns out that that rook will have very magical powers along the b file. Let's look at how it works. Knight f6, and now this was part of their idea. They wanted to play bishop b5. And one thing that's really nice about this is, see, the bishops are kind of moving in on the king. Before, they started off with this diagonal, then they gained this diagonal, and now they're going to take away this diagonal. And we're going to see that those diagonals in front of the king are very important for our mating attack. Nicola moved away. Now queen g3. Good move. Pressuring this pawn on d6. And now... Um, Niccolo made a mistake that wasn't really easy to see that it was a mistake. Probably he should just, uh, he, he has to give away the pawn in some way. You know, maybe he should try to play knight h5 or something. He's definitely got some grief here. But what he did was he was a materialist, see, and he tried to keep the pawn. And let's look at how things developed after that. d5, and now we hit him with bishop d6, very strong move. Now what this is going to do is it's going to force the black queen to go away from the defense of his king. And so Niccolo moved the queen out here, which really is her only convenient square. If she goes to here, then she's going to be hit by this rook. And it was here that from the depths of the audience, a certain Samuel was very silent, very silent the entire time. And then all of a sudden he perked up and he came up with the following idea for Van in the positions. 
which I didn't see at first either. It's just a completely devastating idea. Let's look at what, he, what it is. This noble bishop on d6 decides to sacrifice himself. And what this is, is a really good example of a clearance strategy. So the bishop on d6 is really in the way of the monster queen who wants to come in to attack. So the bishop gives itself away in order to attack. So the queen can come to its square. Okay, so now the next move is absolutely forced. Niccolo and the materialists have to take the bishop. And then, boom, Van brought in the big queen. The queen is such a powerful attacking force. And right now we're down two pieces. Now, knight d7 was played by the materialists. And um, a very interesting situation happened here that I was very proud of the positions because most players here would automatically play queen takes knight check just because it's a check. So a lot of people just say, okay, it's a check, and let's just do it and get it over with. But after queen takes e7, it's not entirely clear what's going on after king c7. And what they did is they found a much better move, which is very surprising to me, because most players don't really realize that, you know, you don't have to take a piece necessarily even if it's check. And so what they did, it's beautiful, they played bishop takes d7, and now we're threatening all kinds of things. We're threatening queen takes knight. We're threatening bishop c6 with a discovered check. And so the materialists were forced to take the bishop. And now watch what they did. They did not take on e7. They played rook takes b7. And I thought this was so nice because the rook on b1 was one of the kind of controversial moves. You know, should white really have done such a thing? And here all of a sudden it turns out to be the hero. And it really demonstrates the power of a rook here on the seventh rank, just touching all of these squares. And now we have a very simple threat. We're threatening queen takes bishop mate. So the materialists defended. And now another nice move. Not queen takes knight check, because that would allow some kind of hope with king c8. They played instead rook takes knight. And that was just a beautiful move, because now... Both of the rooks are wanting to connect on the seventh rank and control absolutely everything. And after the materialists played rook e8, the positions played rook takes bishops, and now black had to resign. If king c8, we have the super mate. That's just a huge mate. I don't even know if I've seen such a huge mate in my life <laughs> with a rook and a queen like that. In any case, it was a very nice game, and I think it was all because Van has his little dance and he's usually, you know, he's a pretty good player, but he, to play at this kind of level, even with some help, was a pretty big deal for him. And I think it had a lot to do with the dance. And what I'm told is there's going this dance has been captured on film and is going to be placed on YouTube. So if you type in Halloween and Van and dance on um, YouTube, you're going to find him doing his dance. And quite a dance it is, which I recommend you checking out. So I hope you've enjoyed this game.